Welcome back. My next guest is Nestor J. Aparicio, doing great things at Baltimore Positive and also throughout the entire Baltimore, Maryland, greater metropolitan area community and beyond. Nestor, welcome in. Hey, man, what's going on? How are you? Just doing fantastic. Had a uh, WNST listener stop in the other day, said uh, to tell you hello. Oh, really? That the, the one we have. That we'll, one? We'll, we'll, we'll call him Mr. Martin. Really nice guy. Came down and... Uh, Made a point to, to seek me out and say hello. And Thank you, Mr. Martin. I appreciate nice, you. Nice, so Dennis. So it's always and, nice uh, when people stop in and we talk. You still got that blue uh, truck over there with the white top. And say, d- listen, uh, sell me on it because, <laughs> like, I here's the thing. And I'll, I'll be honest with you because we'll talk cars here for a minute because we never do this because it's your segment, not mine. But I, I do want to talk about cars because we're sort of in the market. But my wife, we're close to pay. You know, it's like, do we want yeah. to? Do we want four wheel drive? Are we there? She, ha- she has one, one and a half toes in the water. I would take my daughter-in-law's car that you sold her because I like it. That's a great car, by the way. The C-Max, one of my She favorite. wants uh-huh. to trade in. She wants to come see you about getting a new car. Yeah. So but I'm thinking to myself, car. I'd like that. But but her car has the fake gas pump at night with the funny light and the electric. You know she what I'm talking still, about? You still get 45 miles to the gallon. It's a hybrid. It's one of my favorite vehicles of all time. I don't understand it. I mean, my, you know, what I, you know what, my, my daughter the night had I one. stole it from you. I told you I stole it from him one night, right? I had to go yeah. over there, bang on the oh, door, lock the car. in the car, right? It's a great car. My daughter leased one, and I and I kicked myself. I should, when her lease terminated, I should have bought that vehicle. Low mileage. I used to love taking it down to the stadium because you could park it easy. Um, it moves real well, smooth ride. I mean, it's just a fantastic vehicle. It get, it felt like it would get me from here to there very, very capably, and, and I felt and, yeah, very good and, about that. And 45 miles to the gallon. I mean, it's an amazing vehicle. Uh, that's one thing. I'm a big fan of hybrid vehicles. Uh, that way, you can plug in if you want to, and if you don't want to, you don't, and you still get fantastic gas mileage. What does plug in mean? What would I have to do at my house? Or because I <laughs> see them when I'm out at places, but like I'm thinking to myself, my kid's got this thing that makes his car plug in. He's young. He's smart. Don't tell anybody. But like, I don't. I wouldn't even – I'm literally asking you out loud like a total idiot, like no, that if I not. took my daughter-in-law's car, I went over there in the middle of the night and I stole their car, and I saw this big – was it blue, red? It's It looked like a disco, like plugged into the, the gas tank to they, me. They actually have a plug at their house? Yeah, it was plugged I know, in. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, I that's even better for them because – a lot of our customers never even use the plug. If it's a hybrid, they just go to the gas station. But if they're plugging in, I mean, they're pay- they're not paying any money for gas. So you just you just get your uh, wiring done and your plug. I, th- I probably about a thousand twelve hundred dollars, and there you go. You never visit another gas station the rest of your life. Which can I complain thing. about new cars being? Can I be an old guy here before I get to get off my lawn? Don't look Lamar. old though. You, you can be an old guy, but you don't look old. So no, there you I, go. I, 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 if I can grab the device, I actually thought I had it nearby. I think I think I did, but I got an iPod Classic recently that I find to be useful airports flying music okay. because i don't like music on my phone this is my i'm typing on this i'm working on this i don't like working on this i don't like typing on this i'm a traditional if i write anything in the i don't i don't do well on small yeah. glass you right P- you want a pc you want something right else. of course so for for me i got a rental car I don't know, recently chasing Springsteen, Florida, someplace. And it was brand new because you always want the ones that smell good, especially when you're in Florida, right? Not the ones with the crackers in the back seat, uh, you know, kids and orange juice and whatever. So I, I got a very new, clean car and it had no plug in. It was sort of Bluetooth only. Uh, it, did, it didn't know what a mini jack was. And uh, I was like, no, so I'm right sorry. About that. What? You know, so I am afraid of the new vehicle a little bit. I know. But, but they literally sell me because you're doing this thing. And I sh- should admit to you, and this is a total fall in for, for the Ford Motor Company. My favorite car ever, and I know I've told you this, was a Ford Contour SVT. I, I had a, a, like, I had this. I wish I still had it. It was a five speed. It had everything I want from the minute I drove it. I'm like, I, I want that car. And this is 25 years ago. Yeah. It's 1996, five, six, seven, right there. Been a right minute, there. been a minute, yeah. 
Yeah. So sell me on the next car I'm going to love because my wife has she we pulled up, saw this car in traffic and she was like because she remembers the old Thunderbirds with the white top. Sure. Re- she does. Re- remember that 25 years ago? Maybe they brought that line out. This reminded us of that a little but bit. But that's why it's called the Heritage Heritage Edition, because it does remind us of our heritage. That's why you have the color schemes and you have the white rims on the vehicle to match the white top. You have that uh, Houston Oiler baby blue. Uh, coloring. We can put a red pinstripe on that too. Uh, and that's Dennis, just I, I was completely unprepared for the segment today, and I have a special, uh, I have a special uh, piece that I want to introduce here as I get back in. I, 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 did you just what did did you call it? Did you say it was Columbia blue, or did you, you did you didn't say you I didn't said, say Tar Heel blue, right? I said Houston Oiler blue. You didn't I say Lansdowne Viking <laughs> blue, did you? There you go, Lansdowne. I want to let you know that that I. I made this happen. Ah, right? there you go. I, I made the Warren Moon. I, like I made that. I made the commitment of thirty seven dollars and ninety five cents on the internet. You uh, are the man. It it, it 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 is a little odiferous, I must say. Um, but um, I, I have Lee Steinberg coming on the show, and he has a picture of Warren Moon on his desk. So <laughs> I, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna wear this when I do Lee Steinberg here. Um, was that Lee's? Was he a client? Was he a client? Uh, yeah, was, originally, he, correct. Okay, I got you. Yeah, I got back you. in the day, and David Meltzer as well. I've had both of those guys on. Gotcha. Hey, I. Getting back to, is there anything else we should say about the heritage? Like, so it is. Is it a hybrid or is it not? I, it's I not wanted a hybrid. to ask about that. Ve- that's a regular vehicle for an old it, guy. It's gas, but it's all. It's it's limited. It's a limited production model. It's uh, but it's a nod to its rich history. You know, that's what it is. It, it goes. It takes you back. It's retro. But it's still if I go latest, online, if, am I going to look and see like paneling inside? Is it, is it not, like not like that? No, but it, no, but it does okay, have a not... retro look on the interior. I also have a, a, a light yellow on my showroom floor. Looks like Ronald McDonald should be driving it. In fact, I sent it to McDonald's. Here's a plug for them, a free one. Um, but these retro looking vehicles are they're a thing and they're very hot, and very popular these days for people like us, our generation. Well, I would say that the fact that my wife had eyes for the blue one and the white top she's like that's really it that's an awesome looking car it's a, it's a head and turner it is a head just like you put me in that bronco a couple years ago it's big old blue turner. uh you know indigo blue bronco so so i'm, I'm thinking about this and my and i thought is it a hybrid does it have plugs these are the things i'm thinking now i one more thing can we talk about cars one more minute and i promise i'll do lamar because sure. this is Long legitimate this is a legitimate family meeting. We do cars and sports meeting. around here. That's what we do. This is a legitimate family meeting. So my wa- I said to my wife, I went in and yelled at her. You and I did Monday morning. You know, We did the p- uh, tampering day together, you and I, on the radio. And I went and I said, look, Dennis has threatened to ship that car over here. He knows where we live. And she's like, <laughs> uh. so she literally, and this is real world stuff, so you got to talk me out of the tree on this one, okay? She's she she is old school, 31 years, worked at Verizon. She's an engineer. She's serious. She she is old school credit union, still has her credit union in New Hampshire, right? She, she said, man, credit financing, like, see what Dennis is doing on that. Because, yeah. like, she didn't like what her credit union had to say. Ah, your, your, the timing is excellent, too, because just yesterday, Nestor, Ford Motor Credit announced some special financing on, guess what? The Bronco Sport. What? Yeah, you can get uh tell Jen. Hold on. Jen, are you uh, Jen, if you're Jeez. you're listening, you gotta come in. Go ahead. Two point nine percent for sixty months. Two point nine percent for sixty months. All right. Or four point nine for seventy two months. Four point nine for seventy two. Yep. So two nine for sixty, four nine oh, for seventy two. Who 72. wouldn't take the two nine? That's exactly right. Two nine for Everybody's 60, gonna that, take the two that's nine. A deal. I mean, the math's upside down at four nine, I think, right? That's a deal. Yeah, it's a deal, man. I'm telling you, they just just announced it. The All right. Day. Well, don't sell the blue. The, she doesn't know it's it's Euler blue. <laughs> no, I I didn't see it after this morning. If I, if I didn't sell it, I'm gonna send it to you guys. I got I got to get it to your driveway. <laughs> don't send it. Don't don't do that. Don't. It hasn't, I didn't see it this first. morning. I have to look for it. Oh boy, here we go. That means he sold it. it. Now he's getting me worried. Now he's getting me all. I have to find it. Hopefully I have it's to out find there. it. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see. Well, hey, so <laughs> can you get me a quarterback? <laughs> oh, how about the left it's tackle? It's Warren Moon available. <laughs> how about the right tackle who got the left tackle money? Orlando Brown Jr. This, this young man, I, I, Lamar Jackson should call his agent. I don't know if you saw the numbers on that contract he got from the Bengals, but I am. 
If I'm the Ravens, I'm licking my chops if, if he's going to protect Joe Burrow's his blind side. Yeah, it's a fascinating case study with him from wow. Hey Dennis, I ran into him at the combine. So I have an Orlando Brown. Well, you're Here, faster. You're faster than he is, so of course you would run. <laughs> well, you would run into him at the combine. No, no, no. We we went to the combine every year until they made it bad. Now, I have been told they've made it good, but I've been thrown out by Chad Steele. So I like we didn't go, but I have been told if we go back, it might be a worthwhile radio because of where they put the, the radio people yeah. that you can grab guests and Ooh. you can actually do radio and you're not down the hallway around the corner in a convention hall. So where they want to keep you away from everybody. <laughs> so Orlando Brown was doing the weightlifting thing and the weightlifting thing and the podium thing were in the same area. They, they've done it differently through different years. This was, the year that Orlando Brown did it. So we ha- have at it. We're out there. I'm out there with Luke. We're working. We had Rick Neuheisel on. I, you know, I remember being out there and all that. And we were looking for him, not because maybe the Ravens would draft him, but because he's Zeus's kid. And I probably, yeah, he's probably in pictures of mine. Right. And Zeus and I were close that to the end of his life. You know what I mean? And um, so I introduced myself. He was polite to me at a round table where like the media sort of gaggles and gathers, but it was just he and I literally nobody wanted to talk to him. I mean, no offense. He just, it was just he and I, I had a mo I had all the time I needed with him. And I said, I got pictures of your dad that you might want, you know, I'll send them over to you. You know what I mean? Here's my card. I hope you get drafted high. That's the day he bombed, right? Mm. That's the day everything went wrong. Swear to God. Right. So the next day or two happens, he does his interviews. He is on the big screen as he shared getting defecated upon by everybody because it was so terrible. Right. And I swear to God, Dennis, Luke and I flew separately. I I'm pretty sure for some reason we flew separately Maybe Luke has a recollection of this. Maybe he'd have to ask him. We were in the end. I was in the Indianapolis airport for sure. In the big circle, new part of the airport. And there's Orlando Brown leaving, flying back to Oklahoma or maybe Atlanta where home was for him at that moment. Right. And he saw me and I saw him and he's on every TV in Indianapolis, where there's jockocracy going on. I mean, the airport's full of kids with training bags and agents and mm-hmm. trainers and coaches and people coming in and going out because that's just, it's what it is. And I saw him on the way out and I greeted him and I, you know, and he's, you know, like he knows he didn't do well, right? And then, damn if seven weeks later he's not here. Yep. And damn if, what's it been, six years, seven years, however many years it's been since that that day. He is now whatever he tweeted out. He is M- 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 and like whatever, and put it on his shirt and four time uh, pro bowler and two time champ. I mean, he's all of that. And now he got paid. And you and I still don't think he's a left tackle. And neither did Eric Costa. Well, he got a four year, $64 million deal, which is well short of the top of the market for left or right tackles. So he got a below market, but still for him, for his, for his combine workout, for him dropping down to the third round. I mean, his numbers were so bad. I, I remember this like it was yesterday, Nestor. His 40 time was so bad that no offensive lineman, whoever ran that slow, made it in the NFL. And that was my concern as a Ravens fan is like, OK, we got him in the third round. Is he even going to make the team? So they took a shot at him and uh, on him and he made it pay off for himself. And I give him a lot of credit. He's done a great job marketing himself. Uh, love the, the story about his father wanting him to play left tackle. Uh, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I, I don't believe that. I, I His father was a right tackle, and um, I think Orlando Brown Jr. is a very good right tackle, but I'm very happy that he got the big sta- uh, contract with the Bengals, and the Ravens are going to see him twice a year. I, I think it, it bodes well for, for Baltimore. You know what's really interesting, man? And And we can talk to what's happened to me or – you or this or that or the knee or the changes or Steve Saunders or Ray Rice or Steve Bishotti, you know, being off in La La Land or empty seats. We can talk about all of these issues with the team where it's you and me bitching and it's civic and they haven't won and they haven't won playoff games and whatever our, you don't like the parking, you don't like the crime, whatever the issue is on any of it. It is amazing how many, Raven guys leave here with bad vibes lately, right? 
Like Deshaun Elliott's popping off. He didn't even play, you know, but he can't wait to get back and beat the rate. Like it, 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 it's, and I know it's, wow. it, it's, um, it's masculine and jo- I want to get even. And that goes as old as sport. And I'll hear that, but I don't know that it felt that way when Ed Hartwell or Kim Herring or like any of these people, lots and lots of guys left here. Bart Scott didn't like have it out for the Ravens when he left. It, it, it feels weird to me because mm. it feels like not just the training room, what happened a couple of weeks ago where guys are like, they cost me my career, but just guys that feel like, they left under really bad vibe. And then there's Lamar in the middle of all of this. And I, I just scratch my head about it. I don't know because you're an employer. I'm an employer. We have ex employees that appreciate us. Don't appreciate us. All of that. And you're like, Hey, Orlando Brown man, the Ravens gave him a chance. Yeah. <laughs> Lamar Jackson, the Ravens gave him a chance, you know, but it doesn't work out that way in business once it gets to this point. And I don't know why Lamar would want to go play for the Colts or like, one of these places because they pay him the most, but it feels like he's going to this week. I mean, it really does. Right. It comes down to money. And the other thing is just that it's a new era. Like Lamar Jackson likes to say 20 years ago, the players didn't have access to media like they do today. Right. I can imagine that Trent Dilfer the day after he got caught, uh, cut by the, by the Ravens would have been very vociferous on social media. Uh, he was vociferous on my show four years later, like, was, but it wasn't right? immediate and instant as it is today. Like today they just, they just, pick up their phone right like you just showed us you picked up the phone and they just tweeted out whatever's on their mind so i i do think it's just a new era players express themselves openly uh on social media you talk about employees there was no glass door not to give them props but uh, where 20 years ago employees can can slight your organization whether fairly or, or unfairly so everybody has an immediate voice these days and that's why I think you're seeing what we're seeing. I think it's always been there. Disgruntled employees are going to be just that disgruntled, right? And when you get traded, when you get cut, sure, you're going to beat your old team. And some guys have class and say nothing, and other guys are going to emote. Uh, Deshaun Elliott, for instance, I mean, he was hurt more often than not when he played in Baltimore. That wasn't the trainer's fault. He had breaks and whatnot, uh, fractures. There's nothing the trainer could, could have done about that. Well, I, it is amazing to me how that vibe – Literally in my era. I mean, I go back to guys getting cut and leaving and Rob Burnett went and played Miami and Spencer Flett. Like all of these guys went and did other things and still had a, I mean, had a, not a bad word ever about, I, you know, no, anything. I mean, Anquan Bolden retired a Raven, right? There's, there's plenty of good here in Baltimore. Marshall Yanda gave a very uh, heartwarming speech uh, last year at the stadium, his retirement speech, et cetera. Um, well, Ring Sam Cook, speech. Zach Orr, right? These guys are, yeah. are working for the team, right? If you're going to have you're going to have the vocal minority, the the old eighty twenty rule, right? Eighty percent are going to be happy, twenty percent are going to be mad about whatever. And so, to me, it's noise. It's just that noise has been amplified in the in the era of uh, instant communication, right? The uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram, whatever these guys. Patrick Queen scrubbing his Ravens account, going quiet and posting pictures of himself fishing. Which you know, I love to fish, but if I'm the Ravens, I like to see him in the weight room, <laughs> working out versus catching bass out there in Georgia. Well, I, and and there really is this off-season us and them war, right, yes. between the Players Association and everything associated with football. I give my life to you eight months a year. These are the four months where – Okay. Um, look, I had Chad Weasling on this this week, right? To plug what I'm doing right now, because I've had Peter King on this week. I've had Chad Weasling on this week. I've had Aaron Schatz, who invented DVOA and pro football. I mean, serious people on all week to try to look at this Lamar thing in a not fan way or just a media way, but trying to put different hats on. And Chad Weasling was as among the best guests I've had longtime agent, local agent represents Josh Jacobs, just had his player franchised lives here in Canton. Um, you know, uh, his wife and, and uh, we're fam- we're friends and nacho mamas and like, and I haven't had him on the show and I don't bug him much. And he comes to the mm-hmm. Super Bowl and radio row and brings his players by. And we're, you know, we're friends through 25 years, but I'm like, you need to come on the show this week, man. You need to come on. Yeah. And he came on in the middle of the tampering period and went 38 minutes deep with me about what an agent does for a kid <laughs> and what, and how, and what babysitting travel arrangements, anything like that. But more than that, a filter to say, before you tweet, call me and yell at me before you reach for your phone because like I can't undo 
what you've done. And he talked about his player that was found dead in the middle of the night in a car crash, you know, like all sorts of things happen. And what is Lamar Jackson? Like the internet was all like four o'clock. Lamar's got red shoes on. He's ready to go. Like, uh, who cares? I mean, to me, it's noise. Until something happens, it's noise. It's speculation. People love to speculate, and especially on social media. Everybody's got an opinion, right? And everybody's an expert. Everybody's got a source. I mean, I, I read something yesterday where it said Lamar Jackson hasn't, hasn't talked to anyone from the NFLPA in months. So he's not talking to the NFLPA. He's not talking to the Ravens. Who is he talking to? He doesn't to? trust anyone. Anybody. You're right. right? You're 100%. So, like, Chad Weasling and I talked about this. I said, what's the most important thing, Chad? He's like, well, trust. I'm like, whoa, stop, stop. You just said trust. the T word. Big Hold trust. on. Big trust, right? So, <laughs> I, you know, at, at the end of the day, if they don't trust you, I mean, look, man, how many times have we seen these young Mainly African American young men from uh, you know uh, difficult backgrounds and circumstances and broken situations, sitting with an agent and their mother, often maybe sometimes their girlfriend, maybe sometimes they're a buddy, whatever, whoever is the special people in their life. And that picture of Lamar with his mother in the green jacket, you know, bent over and with the phone to his ear, and like we see that, and we've all seen Jerry Maguire. Yes, but we have. Like to think. Of all Patrick Queen has been through with his agent, all that in a lifetime and Eric Weddle has been through, we talk about Warren Moon. I mean, Warren Moon's had hints, allegations, off the field, on the field, you know, Hall of Fame career, different age, like all of that, right? Endorsements, money, shoes, Mm -hmm. lawsuits, all of that. The fact that Lamar's five years into this and still thinks this is a good idea. I don't know, man. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like somebody tweeted out and, and like, I don't, I wish I could find it cause I'd pull it up, but it was a little profane and as Twitter can be. And I'm, it was, it was on the backside of the WNST Twitter where it's like in a timeline of somebody we follow who follows us back or whatever. And somebody said, the Ravens are throwing $150 million around and these teams are jockeying for this kid. And, and this blanky blanker is tweeting out poop emojis. Yeah, I saw that. You know that. what I mean? I saw like, that. Yeah, and it's I like, saw that. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself. I, I, in fact, I know who the guy is, a good, good, good friend of the family. Absolutely. Oh, I don't even know who that is. Well, congratulations yep. to him because because it really guy. did make me say like. No, but he's right. Are, are we being serious here? I mean, like, what, what, where is Jim Ursay in this? Where's Arthur? Arthur Blank is gone. Uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are gone. So we're starting to see teams get out of the way. And then the Ravens. To your point, I don't know. They've got the cap space, and they love Lamar. And can, I mean, and it feels to me like John thinks he can walk on water in general. So to think that like they can bring Lamar back in and fix this and love him up and get everything erased over a hundred fifty million dollars, like not not yep. over. Come on back. We're going to have minimum wage. Come on in. Come on back at market rate. We're paying you more than anybody was willing to pay you. We love you. You, you, let's go win a Super Bowl and do all those things we talked about. Yep. Can they, you know, can they do that on May 10th and have a, a love? I don't, these are really tough. These are questions for somebody like you that's hired, fired, been through all of that, lost employees in all sorts of ways and have some seasoning that John Harbaugh, Steve Bishotti, Eric DaCosta have that this young man doesn't have a Chad Weasling. And when you spend time with these agents and you think this is, Christos or Barry or, you know, as a as a 17 year old young athlete, the kind of person, whether it's Lee Steinberg, pick your agent, pick any agent you want, Jay-Z, pick anybody you want. But somebody's got to go do this business. Drew Rosenhaus. And the fact that it, it, it really boggles my mind, Dennis, it really does. And the more time you spend around these agents and they start telling you how complex this is. The more you don't want their job, but the more you it's like being with a lawyer or a doctor or anybody, even a serious car dealer like yourself, that like you want to be serious about doing serious. I'm buying a forty thousand dollar vehicle. I want to know who I'm getting it from. Right. I mean, I'm making a serious transaction. This is this is tragic. It's tragic. It really is. I sell cars for a living. Okay, I would never represent myself in a court of law. I will never fly uh, an airplane as a pilot. These, these, are, these, these are my point. Is, it's <laughs> fundamental. These, I will never operate on myself. You know what I mean? It's like these are people who are educated, schooled, been there, done that, as you said, seasoned. This is what they do for a living. That two or three percent is a minimal number 
uh, for what they can do for you in, in terms of avoidable years of your contract, uh, no trade clauses, uh, injury uh, uh, clauses. Even a, a guy that I, that I like and respect a lot, like Roquan Smith, I can't help to think that he left something on the table by not having a seasoned agent to – I mean, he's a football player. There's nothing wrong with that, and I'm not diminishing or being disrespectful. I'm a car guy. I sell cars, right? Uh, you don't want me flying your airplane, though. <laughs> you don't want me being your advocate in court for you, right? So we pay In the people. case of Roquan Smith, though, right? So I just try to think about this in being a 25-year-old, best-in-the-world athlete with limited life experience outside of the football experience that you need to have to be the greatest of what you do, which is – you know, he's certainly among them, right? I mean, we're talking about a kid that's either going to get 150 or 250 million, sure. but he's, you know, he's not coming back to poverty here, right? He's coming back no. to at least $33 million and has 30 million in the bank or should, right? Or like that, or minus taxes, right? So, I, 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 you know, for me, I, I'm not of the mindset that, you know, this isn't a transaction. It's just as you grow in life, you learn what you don't know. And in the case of Roquan Smith, and this is how I'm thinking about it with these young men, all of these young men have been to the underwear Olympics. Every year it's thrown back at them. Whether they have an agent or not, they're all thrown back to the day they were left. Orlando Brown's yipping it, right? We were just talking about yipping but you know, about. But he switched agents about a year ago, Nestor, if, if I remember correctly. So he okay. got himself not just an agent, but he got himself a different agent. He how got many the tag. guys have been in Lamar Jackson's ear? From beginning with Mark Clayton and, uh, you know, sure. any of those guys have he probably said, it. Lamar, he if is... you need my guy, if you need my guy, if you need Absolutely. my guy. But now in the air, we have the NIL, right? The name, image, likeness. I mean, look at Baker Mayfield. I get he was 1-1, but I got tired of seeing him on TV. You know, He was doing all the commercials. Patrick Mahomes was State Farm on TV all the time. So what is – how much money – even Roquan Smith, how much money – absentee an agent has Roquan Smith and Lamar Jackson have left on the table by not having an agent. Well, here's where I am with Roquan Smith and maybe Lamar, right? All these kids every year go to the combine and they see 32 colors, right? And then the team loves them to your point and says, you're my guy. It's like my wife saw 32 colors. She sees this blue one. She wants the blue one, right? <laughs> so, um, so I want the canary one. Um, so Lamar comes here, plays happy with this, unhappy with that calluses, Bruised yeah. feelings. These things happen. Sure, sure. Now, all of a sudden, it's like, hey, what about the girl I met at the beach a couple of years ago? You know what I mean? Wonder what she's up to. You know what I mean? They, they, that, 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 that scout loved me. That scout, he, he like my mother loved him. You know what I mean? So there's all of that, right, that may have happened in Indianapolis where – Anybody that would have fallen and fallen in love with him on tape, on film, would say, "I love that kid." Let's, you know, let's. I, I love him then. I love him now. I love that he doesn't. Have, I love these independents. I love that he's got a middle finger flying for everybody and wants to win so bad he can taste it. Pounds on the ground. I love that kid, right? So there were other people that loved him. Roquan Smith goes to Chicago with those losers, freezes his ass off, loses, loses, freezes it, like all that. He wants out, right? If he had an agent, maybe he would have been talked into staying. I think we can all agree that if Lamar had an agent, he would be closer to having a deal with the Baltimore Ravens and being happy and having $100 million sitting in the bank right now instead uh, if he did get injured. But all of these kids think about the next thing, and now Roquan's here, and he did it his way. Lamar sees that and says, maybe I'll be a Colt. You know what I mean? Like. Hey, you know what? Ro Roquan Smith just saw Tremaine Edmonds from the Bills get signed by the Bears to a similar deal that he signed with the Ravens, right? And, and Edmonds, to me, is not as, as good as a player as Roquan Smith is. We just saw Juju Smith-Schuster get a big contract by the Patriots, while Jacoby Myers, who's actually a better wide receiver, he's looking for a team. A lot of strange things are happening in the NFL today, Ness. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm waiting for the purple plumes of smoke. I think we're all waiting for Jim Ursay's <laughs> private chat or uh, Dan Snyder to be doing something illicit. Okay, um, okay, I like that. All I, of these, the rumors are unbelievable. Like, I, like I can't that. imagine sitting here four hours a day taking phone calls and playing, you know, the shield to why or why not a maniac like Daniel Snyder would yes. do this to the league and do he this would. to Steve Bishotti? Of course he would. Yeah. Now, so Willie, we'll see. Jim Ursay, I mean, 
I love me some Jim Irsay. I really, really do, man. Gave me a great memory last year and going up and seeing Mike Mills and the band play and Mellencamp's out on the road. But he's crazy enough to do it, right? I mean, he so he sure so is. at any point, I it do see I do see the Baker Mayfields and these things of flipping and doing like all this stuff. But I also and I know Tampa doesn't have cap space and this prop barely doesn't have interest in Lamar Jackson, right? Some of this comes down to coaching. Like yeah. I talk to people in Tennessee, they're like, Mike Vrabel doesn't want to run an offense where this quarterback runs in the linebackers. No offense, just not the way he's going to play the game. Um, and there's a lot of people that felt that way. Thirty one of teams felt that way five years ago in the draft and you and I and Luke have talked blue in the face and you and I were convinced he's going somewhere because of the bright, shiny object thing. I, I am. So I, if I, I'm happy, I don't bet. I'm happy. I didn't put that. You and I both hundred dollars down on him going elsewhere. Cause I, I don't, <laughs> and I he don't still know might, he still doing. might. It's still early. Anything could happen. A lot of posture. Like you said, you got a couple of owners that are wild cards and Snyder and Ursay. Anything can happen. If this thing, thing with Aaron Rodgers, this dance, between Rodgers and the Jets go south. Guess what, Joe Douglas? Joe Douglas needs, needs to win this year to save his job, him and that Robert Sally. So the Jets could also enter the fracas. It, you, well, it only takes one team, Ness. I, I would say it's amazing that you and I have done 30 minutes and you just said Aaron Rodgers for the first time, which, you know, in the aftermath of all of that dust up on Wednesday, the, the, the notion that, that we have a bigger story than that right. uh, is just – and he's our guy. And here's the word. Like, the minute he goes off to the Colts, you and I are going to say, nah, we told you. And told then we're going to say, who's going to play quarterback? Right, right. <laughs> you no, know? right. I mean, that's going to – and then all of a sudden, it's the draft, and it's the focus, and Stetson it's this, Bennett. it's that. And... It'll be Stetson Bennett starting for the Ravens. <laughs> are you convinced that the Falcons are really out because of Tyler Heineke? Or, you know what I mean? Are you convinced? Yeah, I'm not 100% convinced, but but they're heading that way. They're, they signed uh, John o. Smith, the former – Tennessee tight end they got from uh, the, the Patriots. It looks like the Falcons are serious about moving away, but you only need one suitor, and the Ravens right now have two, potentially three or four, still sitting there uh, to bid for Lamar Jackson's services. This is this thing is far from over, Ness. Dennis, I will be with you on Monday morning, yes, bright and early. I, you know, Maryland, we're all be by the time this airs. I mean, it's either, you know, oh my God, West Virginia or not. But I, I, I before it starts, I would just say I'm hoping for good things and I'm wearing the red. I, right. I didn't even wear the oil or blue today for you. I decided I thought this might match really well. Wouldn't that look nice? It's sort of the blue over the red with the You know what? If, if if you and Jen are run, running around in that heritage blue edition Bronco sport and you're rocking that jersey, man, I tell you what, that's a home run. I'm gonna let my hair down. Yeah, you should. Like Ray Childress, you know, like. uh... (laughs) (laughs) All right, man, I appreciate you. Keep doing great things. I appreciate you. We're always having fun, you and me. That's right. There he goes. Nestor J. Aparicio here here in 1570 AM WNST. We'll take a quick break and come back right after this.